everyone. My name is Roxana Moran. I am a um, cardiologist at uh, Mount Sinai Hospital and professor of medicine, cardiology, population health science, uh, and policy at the ICANN School of Medicine. But today's conversation is all about my guests and incredible guests, uh, speakers, and we're going to have a fantastic con conversation on a whole new field of cardio obstetrics. We care about your health as a woman from the time you are born, but especially in your reproductive years. And with me today, I have two fantastic experts, a very close friend, cardiologist, and uh, associate professor of medicine in cardiology, director of our uh, echocardiography uh, laboratory at the main campus at Mount Sinai Hospital, uh, but also with a very, very deep special interest in taking care of uh, high-risk pregnancies uh, with cardiovascular issues, Dr. Lori Croft. Welcome, Dr. Croft. Thank you, Roxana. Great to see you. Nice to see you. And then our really, really special guest uh, is Dr. Angela Bianco. She is a board-certified maternal fetal medicine specialist, director of obstetrics and labor and delivery at Mount Sinai, a, a, an associate professor in um, obstetrics, gynecology, and reproductive science. And we're just so thrilled to have these two highly specialized, fantastic ladies here with us, caring for women with cardiovascular issues during their reproductive years. Welcome, Dr. Bianco. Thank you. It's a pleasure to spend this time with you. I know. I think it's really fantastic. So let's, you know, this whole new field, cardio obstetrics, um, what does it really mean to you as a, a maternal fetal medicine person? And how important is it for your patients who are at high risk to have that kind of input from a cardiologist? Uh, well, I actually think that it's really critical um, and incredibly important um, it's so beneficial for us to really start to engage women and become um, an integral part of their care with our cardiology colleagues, even before they think about becoming pregnant. Um, when we do that preconception counseling, it is so helpful for patients and their extended families to understand all the options available and the possible pathways that they can choose and to understand that we have such a comprehensive approach in taking care of this special unit. It's a dyad, the mother and the fetus, and making sure that we provide quality, safe care um, in, in a nurturing and supportive environment. And, and we have the ability to do so in, in an incredibly comprehensive manner. Yeah, I mean, there's no question that we have seen over the years maternal age increasing. And with that comes cardiovascular risk. Uh, Dr. Croft, um, what are you telling and, and when are you getting involved? Are you getting, are you, is this like a joint? How do you, how do you approach uh, a woman who's wanting to get pregnant and has cardiovascular issues or at, at risk for so cardiovascular? As you're saying, Roxana, um, cardiovascular disease complicates, you know, one in four, one to four percent of all pregnancies. Um, with, as you said, with more advanced uh, maternal age, more people are obese, there's more hypertension, diabetes, and smoking history as, the, as these women go into pregnancy. So you get to see more of these things during their pregnancy. And I work with a great uh, group of obst obstetricians who really know what they're doing and identify these people early in their preconceptual visits. And they're sent to be very early in the pregnancy so we can make a, a plan and we can move forward and work as a team to give the mother and the fetus the best outcome. And it's the team approach that I love. It's about the team and that team building is already well established at Mount Sinai in a comprehensive manner. It sounds like Dr. Bianco, that you are really uh, devoted to this kind of, these kinds of issues. What would you tell? So let's just say we have a 45 year old woman who's, uh, who wants to conceive. She has history of hypertension and diabetes. What, and she comes to you and uh, she wants to get pregnant. Uh, what do you tell her? Well, that sounds like our average patient <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but um, well, first of all, at age 45, the, the um, concept of becoming pregnant in, a, in and of itself is quite complex. And part of our comprehensive, uh, comprehensive approach also involves 
um, our reproductive medicine colleagues who are really um, so skillful in achieving pregnancy in women of advancing age. And so we would talk about all the options, including um, donor ovum and et cetera, IVF. And then we would uh, create a care plan, which would involve a very precise and detailed um, plan with regard to managing her hypertension and a use of appropriate medications, medications with a good uh, safety profile during pregnancy. We would discuss at length the management of diabetes, which is very different in, in a pregnant woman. Um, our target goals are just much more precise because of the impact on fetal development. And we would also bring into the fold or continue um, if there's been established care with one of our local endocrinologists. And we would work very closely and collaborate with people like Dr. Croft and, and our, as I said, colleagues in endocrinology as well as reproductive medicine. But I would reassure her that to be honest, we have cared for thousands of patients just like this and have seen really, really optimal, excellent outcomes. So it is very much doable, but we do have to make sure that we're managing and staying ahead of complications that could arise by optimizing management to avoid that. No, absolutely. And those complications, uh, we've, you know, we've been, I, I've seen and heard and been there um, where Dr. Croft has presented a lot of these uh, to our uh, conferences where she's taken care of some of these very, very high risk when there is a complication. But the truth is that before, as you're planning, what you're laying out here is a, is a full plan. It's like when you plan for a catastrophe, Hopefully it never happens, right? And it just kind of get, gets you very well prepared. Dr. Croft, tell us how you work with Dr. Bianco and her team in making sure that everything goes perfectly well with healthy hearts at the end, both for the fetus and the, and the mom. Well, as you know, um, in pregnancy, there's profound hemodynamic changes that occur, right? The cardiac output has to increase, so the amount of work the heart has to do. So like Dr. Bianca said, we identify these patients early and we assess them based on their history, their physical and whatever diagnostic tests we might need to make sure that their heart can handle this big burden during pregnancy. And for the most part, we have very healthy 45 year old women that can go through pregnancy. And sometimes we test them a little more just to make sure they're safe. Um, so we approach it as, you know, getting a good history, talking to the, to the patient, making sure they're taking the appropriate medications. As you know, we use, you know, medications that are safe during pregnancy, but with, with pregnancy, the pharmacokinetics are also altered. So you have to make sure you're on the right doses of these medications. You might need higher doses or lower doses, depending on the patient. So we really like to say, start with the team approach, start early on in the pregnancy and follow them very closely throughout the pregnancy. But in the, in the end, we take thousands of these women through pregnancy and it's fairly safe and we are prepared for any complications that arise and just good communication between the doctors and the patient is really important. Yeah, so I'll go back now to the young woman who um, uh, has risk factors and feels, well, my age will help me get through the pregnancy and I won't have issues. And then into the third trimester or maybe early in the second trimester, you start to see those elevated blood pressures, elevated blood sugars, and you begin to start to worry about that. And then there is all of this other issues about clotting factors and heart failure and et cetera, et cetera. And the, the, the word of preeclampsia and obviously uh, urgency of, uh, of, of those matters. How do you all manage those, Dr. Bianco? What, what, what kinds of measures do you have? And what do you think we have to do to make sure that the heart health of women are protected before, during, and after pregnancy? Well, I think that it is really critically important that when women um, seek gynecologic care with their established gynecologist, who may or may not be doing obstetrics, but they certainly have the skills to counsel women, it needs to be reinforced that, that these women, regardless of their age, whether they're 20 or 40, it's very, very important and helpful for you to continue to engage 
that relationship with your primary care provider, which may just be a gyneco gynecologist um, if you don't necessarily have um, a pre-existing disorder. But when you have these conversations and this established relationship, that provider can detail for you what's important and what you should achieve even before thinking about getting pregnant. So things like weight management, smoking cessation, checking routine labs, your hemoglobin A1C, your thyroid function. Uh, like Dr. Croft mentioned, a very detailed history, including a family history and assessing for cardiovascular uh, risk factors. All of those things can be performed way before um, a woman even thinks about getting pregnant. And that is gonna set her up for the best possible outcome. But that being said, if we don't have the opportunity to do so for a variety of reasons, we could still try and get things done very quickly, even if it's periconceptually or in the first trimester, where we engage all the appropriate um, clinicians as well as the patient and, and her partner um, and, and, um, and optimize uh, care. Oh, absolutely. And so Dr. Croft, tell us about how confident you feel for um, the care of a very complicated uh, woman with, let's say, postpartum heart failure or um, those kinds of things that are you may not have even imagined that it would happen, the unexpected events. How are we prepared at Mount Sinai to take care of these patients? What should patients know about what kinds of services are available? It's not just about the prevention, but also getting to the, the catastrophes that can take place. Well, when unfortunately these catastrophes happen, uh, Mount Sinai is an amazing tertiary care facility. So not only do we have amazing specialists for the baby if they're delivered uh, preterm, the, the neonatal intensive care unit here is one of the best in the city as well as the country. It's an amazing facility. But for the mother, we have specialists here, our heart failure colleagues who are better than anyone around. They are skilled at this. They have um, mechanical support available. We have a great cardiothoracic uh, team with Ani Anua being able to support patients through delivery and postpartum. So Mount Sinai delivers the best care in all the different aspects of cardiology and they're all at our disposal when someone really becomes quite gravely ill. And that's how we move forward. We use our colleagues, we use our expertise, we use all the resources that Mount Sinai provides. So what are some of those risk factors for uh, peripartum cardiomyopathy? So um, we usually see it in older women or very young women, multigravis, people delivering twins, um, African-American women, obese women, um, you know, anyone with, it goes into a pregnancy with perhaps decreased left ventricular function to start with. So we watch these patients very closely, but um, it's really identifying these patients as soon as possible when they have symptoms, bringing that, you know, the, making sure we see her and then delivering her appropriately with backup plan and with every a big team approach, including also, we should mention our, our um, the anesthesiologists, the OB anesthesiologists are amazing here also. As part of, we have a, I will sit down and have a delivery plan and maybe Angela can speak to that more, but we're very multi, you know, multi-team approach. Yeah, I mean, there's no question that maternal fetal medicine is incredibly important. Um, and we're learning uh, from the global burden of disease from what we, I have done in the last two years, doing a lot of research on this to try to understand what's really going on. You would be very surprised about some of the demise of women um, who are not having great care during their pregnancy and reproductive years. And I think it's really important for those women at risk to know their risk to go to the right place, to be evaluated. And the comprehensive care that we're hearing from the two of you is just so comforting to know that this is what's going on at Mount Sinai behind the scenes. So you're coming in, you're being seen, you're being evaluated in all different areas. And it sounds to me, Dr. Bianco, that you would be assessing a, a, a woman who would be at risk beforehand. So you're thinking about it before anything happens and you're doing all kinds of measures to try to 
avoid that horrible situation of a of you know heart failure after pregnancy, et cetera, but that we're uh, we're well equipped and that we absolutely need the patients to also follow us. Isn't that right, Dr. Bianco? Yeah. I absolutely agree. Um, I think preemptive planning is essential and, and vital. Um, but I, I just wanted to emphasize uh, what Dr. Croft was just speaking to, and that is the collaborative approach. I can tell you, I have taken care of multiple patients with Dr. Croft and other colleagues. And, and I would say that the degree of collaboration is unparalleled. And in some, in some instances, not to be trite, but it's almost a transcendental experience. The way that we are able to, on a dime, meet together and, and just quickly get together an interdisciplinary team meeting to discuss these patients that can be incredibly complex and all the, the moving parts and how we're gonna maximize the fetal outcome as well as the mom and the cardiovascular outcome. We recently just cared for a patient who was critically ill and um, we were really um, incredibly happy with an optimal result for this woman. Um, but, but what struck me most is how quickly we came together as a team, regardless of time, regardless of day of the week. Um, and, and people are so selfless and really um, are just willing to do anything possible to, to achieve the best possible outcome uh, you know, in that situation. And, and we do this on a regular basis. And, and I think that having these interdisciplinary team meetings and approaches are really what sets Mount Sinai apart. Um, and I have to say, even on occasion when things have been very complicated and sometimes we've had some issues with with potentially communication and making sure that the patient and the extended family of the patient understand the, the complexities of the situation. On occasion, we've even brought the patient and an extended family member into these interdisciplinary team meetings so that they can understand the depth of thought. Um, and of course, we're speaking to them in lay terms as well, and having them be decision makers. When, when there are decisions uh, possible that can be shared in terms of a shared decision-making model with, with the patient and, and her family. Yeah, and I mean, there's no question uh, that this is, to me, this is a start of a conversation of the comprehensive care that we have. And I'm hoping that I can have both you, Dr. Croft and Dr. Bianca back with us again. Um, to discuss specific, and we're asking our audience, all of you who are looking and watching and listening, uh, send us uh, your topic that you want to cover, um, questions that you might have, and we will get Dr. Bianco and Dr. Croft back up again, and we'll focus on those areas. Um, I think what you've told us today is tremendous. The team approach that is not just about highly specialized physicians, but it's really an entire care team with nurses and labor and delivery specialists, as well as nurse practitioners, physician assistants, and of course, uh, social workers and everyone else who's working together to come with the best possible outcome that you're planning ahead of time and that you are really having a patient-centered way of treating these patients, giving them their options and talking to them from the get-go as they're planning their pregnancy, and then taking them through until you have this beautiful outcome of both lives coming out perfectly beautiful, like as you said, a dyad. What a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Um, thank you, Dr. Croft, for your insights and your incredible diligence in taking care of these women. Um, and making their heart health is in incredibly important. And Dr. Bianco for um, giving women the opportunity, even those at risk, to go through a smooth pregnancy with a wonderful outcome. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks, Roxana. It was wonderful. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you.